my car snobbery came up hard against a snooty kit car owner recently on a holiday weekend when my wife called me and said that there was, I think, a Lamborghini, I'm not sure, up the street. And I had absolutely nothing to do. I hadn't showered that day. I was just kind of wandering around the house aimlessly. So I was like, all right, cool. So I grabbed a Corona, stuck it in a koozie, and wandered up the street. And I got about three blocks away and realized that it was definitely not a real Lamborghini. It was a kit car. It was a bad one. So I sauntered up to it and just kind of looked around it, checking it out. And again, it wasn't anything interesting to me because it wasn't a real Lamborghini, but my other alternative was to walk home and keep drinking my beer. So I figured I'd look at this awful kit car and find everything wrong with it. So I was just about to walk away and I noticed that the parking lights were on. Yeah, it's probably going to kill the battery and this guy doesn't want to have a bad day. And there was a bunch of people because it was a holiday weekend. So there's like 10 cars in the driveway. And so I walked up the driveway and just said, excuse me, I um, don't mean to bother you guys, but, and I didn't know how else to identify the car in the driveway other than, I mean, I couldn't call it a real Lamborghini. So I just said that the white kit car, the lights are on. And the owner immediately identified himself by retorting, it's not a kit car. I wasn't going out of my way to call this guy out. I had no intentions or interest in doing that. I didn't care. I was about to walk home. I just wanted him to turn his lights off. But once he engaged, I had to engage as well. So we got back to the car. He turns his lights off with not so much as a thank you for saving his afternoon from a dead battery. So I said, all right, if it's not a kit car, what is it? He goes, it's a Corvette. And I laughed. I was like, yeah, uh, with the engine in the rear. He goes, well, you're being sarcastic, so I am too. I'm thinking, no, I wasn't actually being sarcastic, but okay, I'll play along. So I said, so it has a V12, huh? He goes, yeah, great. Let's see the engine. He goes, do you have enough money? And at this point, I'm just incredibly confused. I consider myself fairly quick-witted and able to come up with a, a good response most of the times, except when I'm throwing a curveball like that. And I just thought, I, I don't know wh what you mean. Enough money to what? To, to buy your car? Because certainly I have 10 grand, but not in my back pocket. <laughs> like, granted, I was holding a beer. I was unshowered. I was wearing my, you know, deep V white Hanes undershirt that was probably a little bit pit stained. And I did not look like I had two nickels to rub together. But whatever, I, I guess he was judging me. So I just kind of said, like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I just, I, I live down the street. I walked up to check out your car. At this point, in order to, I guess, show me what having enough money to see his engine meant, he pulls a few hundred dollar bills out of his pocket and starts counting off and shows me like $300. And he's like, I don't remember what he said, but it was something effective like, you know, I have money. I was like, good for you. I What? And then he just goes, you're not seeing my engine. I was like, Okay, fine. And so then at this point, um, a couple ladies from the party come to talk to him. And I'm respectfully staying on the sidewalk because it's not my property. And I'm not trying to like, you know, be on somebody else's private property. I'm just on the sidewalk looking in his car. So he can't exactly ask me to leave. But what he does is he shoes these ladies away from me as if I'm diseased. And then he starts recounting to them his side of the story and how he kind of owned me by asking if I had any money and how he had so much more money, but in full volume so that I can hear him making fun of me. Now, the, the girls also ask, hey, my, my friend was asking about your boat. When are you getting your boat in the water? And the other girl asked what kind of boat he has. And he goes, oh, I got a 40-foot Sea Ray. Now, this was, I think this was July 4th. And I'm going, okay, I'm a boater. It's Ohio. We got about four months of boating. It's July 4th, and if you have a boat and haven't put it in the water yet, you don't have a boat. Now, I don't want to call this guy a career liar, but he definitely was lying about the kit car, so, you know, he'd started off on the wrong foot. 
his dress and his skin tone screamed, I've never been in the sun. You can usually tell boaters by their, you know, wrinkled leather. And this guy was as white as a sheep. I'm like, you, no, you, you are 100% landlubber. I didn't d d desire or care to call him out on that, but I'm just like, man, this guy, this guy's really putting on a show for the girls. So defeated, I walked home. He had certainly gotten the better of me in that uh, exchange, but I was just so baffled. I'm like, I, I don't know how you're so full of yourself that you think people have to have money to see your, your engine in your fake Lamborghini. After he said it's a Corvette, he said, it is a 1986 Lamborghini Countach 5000 QV. At which point I asked him, so it has a V12. Now he was very sure of himself with that. The ironic thing is he was actually right about it being a 1986, it was a 1986 Fiero. But I didn't pull up the Carfax on the car until later, because that would have been a great response is to just show him, I'm sorry, your car is a Fiero. There's any number of other great responses too, such as one my wife suggested, which was just pulling up a screenshot of my bank account, which at the time happened to contain enough money to buy a real Countach and just be like, hey man, I'll give you this much money if it's real. Or like, hey, I'll give you a thousand bucks if you open that engine bay up and there is a V12. Any number of great responses I'm thinking of as I'm doing the walk of shame back down the hill for not owning this guy. Then I get home and I was like, wait a minute, I have an idea. I have a real Lamborghini in storage. It's not mine, but it's a client's in storage at my shop 10 minutes away. I've only had one beer, it's a Corona, it's like three and a half percent alcohol, so I'm totally good. I think I'll go get it and just pull up. So I texted my client real quick, I'm like, hey, can I take your Lamborghini for a ride? Yep, no problem, enjoy it. So I run to the shop, get the Lamborghini, go back. My wife is excited about this potential ownage and she wants to ride up there with me. I cruise by, he's already left. My like, God. Lee, that would have been great. Pull up and just walk up the driveway again. Excuse me. I thought you might like to see what a real Lamborghini looks like. Did not have that chance. My wife also came up with a great idea, which was to give him this award that I had won at a car show a number of years back, which was, ironically, I had won it with a real Lamborghini, but it was this local yokel independence day car show and they didn't know what to do with the lamborghini or what it was so they put me in the kit car uh category and i won it so i had a trophy for the best kit car that i had won with a real lamborghini and it happened to be sitting at home and she said oh you should have gone up and awarded him that trophy so I uh, put the word out on social media that I was looking for this car, and apparently he was a serial offender. He went around all over the place claiming there was a real Lamborghini, and a cop friend of mine had actually seen his friend posted online with a selfie saying like, oh man, it's you know everybody's dream poster car. I got a call that he was down at a restaurant nearby, and it was like five o'clock, Time to go home. My wife likes me home promptly. She has dinner plans usually. And so I text her that, you know, this car was down here and assume that she want me home for dinner. And she just said, go now. <laughs> she really wanted me to own this guy. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm headed down. So I went down, met this, uh, the guy who had texted me at the restaurant across the street and Aaron asked me if she wanted me to bring the trophy, the kit car trophy. I'm like, heck yes. So we went over and looked at the car and we're just kind of walking around it and I recognized the owner. He was sitting out on the patio so he could view his car and we got too close to it and he beeped the alarm and beep, beep. I was like, oh my gosh, he's one of these guys. I mean, this thing was awful. It was bad fiberglass. The windows were cut out with a Sawzall. It had this like spray painted decal on the fiberglass dashboard that said fresh as F and hood pins holding the the front trunk and the engine cover down. The proportions were all off, four lug wheels. It was a shorty chassis. Like it was, it was a really bad one. So we went back to the restaurant, waited and waited and waited for him to come out and waited and waited. And after like an hour and a half, finally saw him come out with some ladies 
And so I like grab the trophy, run across the street. My buddy grabs his camera and follows me. And we get there and he's showing it off to these ladies, lets one of them sit in it. And the funny thing was she couldn't get out of it. So it was like this almost medical emergency where we've got like three people trying to extract her from the passenger seat. So I wait for all this to finish. And I was just like, hey man, I brought you an award. And he obviously didn't recognize me, thankfully. He goes, oh really, for what? I said, oh, you got the best kit car in this parking lot. And I handed him the trophy. He goes, it's not a kit car. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah, uh, it's a 1986 Fiero. He goes, no, it's not. He goes, I'll bet you $1,000 that this is a real Lamborghini. I'm like, oh, perfect. Deal. I'll take the bet. And he all of a sudden backed off because he goes, oh, shoot. This guy ain't messing around. And like, I was actually showered this time. I was wearing a nice watch, maybe a car t-shirt, like... You know, I kind of pretty womaned his ass, I guess. So he backed off right away, and then he goes, well, I, you know, I, I prefer the term replicar. Come on, man, it's a friggin' Fiero. At that point, he started to, he, he, he actually cooled down a little bit and was not as antagonistic towards me, but he's, you know, talking to me about the car, and I'm like, okay, you know, neat, whatever. He's, he's trying to save some face, and he goes, well, but it has, has a bunch of real Lamborghini parts on it. It's like, oh, really? Like what? Well, the wheels? Nope. The engine cover? Nope. And just everything he lists off, nope. Nope. He's like, well, the, the front trunk cover? Nope. He's like, well, no, I, it was the, it's the one from the anniversary model. And I just look at him, I go, I had a Countach anniversary. It's not it. It's not fiberglass. Like, and they don't have hood pins. Oh yeah, the hood pins aren't, aren't, those are added. Those aren't correct. I'm like, dude, <laughs> just stop, just stop. The only redeeming part about the car is somebody had dropped a 350 V8 in it. And you could see that from underneath. Like there was, there was a massive engine in it. So it wasn't just the Fiero four six cylinder. My buddy that was there <laughs> played it up perfectly. And he just goes, Hey, do you think I could get a picture of you guys? Like you handing him the trophy? <laughs> so we took a picture in front of the car and I, I still don't think he knew if we were messing with him or not, but uh, I, yeah, we had, we had a lot of fun with that whole ordeal. So I asked him once again to see the engine because now I want to see the V8. And uh, this time he didn't ask me for proof of funds, but he said no. And then he admitted that he had never opened the engine cover on it. So my guess is he didn't know how. So as we're walking away, the two ladies kind of, you know, saw this whole exchange and one of them remarks to the other, she goes, well, I guess we have friends in high places, referencing the Lamborghini owner. And the other one just responded kind of sarcastically, well, it looks like it anyway. I really shouldn't be one to criticize um, or, or even to, to assume that this guy's Lamborghini isn't real. Because I mean, for him, it, it is his truth. And who am I to say that my truth is, you know, better than his truth. So in in, in his world, his, his car actually is a Lamborghini. And I, I really can't say that it isn't. I mean, if, if he identifies it as a Lamborghini, then, then I guess it is. And, and I have to acknowledge that. When you get a ticket, no matter where it happens, it's more important than ever to fight every one. And the perfect partner in that fight is the Ticket Clinic. When you get a ticket, you're facing costly insurance, premium increases, points on your license, fines, risk of suspension, jail time, and they can help you avoid all of that. They've got offices in Florida and in California, but they can help you fight a ticket through their network of attorneys no matter where in the United States you get one. You can text a picture of your ticket to 305305, or you can check them out now at the link in the description below. So thank them for their support of Venwiki, of Car Trek, and fight your ticket with the Ticket Clinic.